So the homework, use the definition of the Taylor series to find the Taylor series centered at C for the function. Now this problem is pretty neat because here we can use something that we had already derived from uh, before. So recall that e to the x has the power series representation as the summation as n goes from uh, 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. We use that to our advantage. So for this problem, e to the 2x becomes the summation. Replace x with 2x. Summation is n goes from 0 to infinity of 2x to the n all over n factorial. And you can write this as the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity. You can take each term out of the parentheses. So this is 2 to the n times x to the n all over n factorial. Some of these are a little bit easier that you can kind of glean from before. If, if this was c equal to 0, we're done. But because we did that before, but this is c equal to power of 4, and so that gets messy and um, takes a little time. So we evaluate f at c. This is pi over 4. Cosine pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. f prime of x is negative sine x. f double prime at x is negative cosine x. f triple prime at x is negative times a negative. So we sine x, we get positive sine x. Fourth derivative. <coughs> cosine x. Fifth derivative negative sine x, the sixth derivative, negative cosine x. So we evaluate at c equal to power of 4. So f prime of power of 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2. See, the unfortunate thing here about uh, this cosine is that the alternating terms don't cancel because here it's centered at power 4. So sine and cosine share a value at power 4. f double prime power 4. This is negative square root of 2 over 2. f triple prime power 4 is positive square root of 2 over 2. The fourth derivative power 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. The fifth derivative power 4 is the negative square root of 2 over 2. The sixth derivative, power of 4, is negative square root of 2 over 2. Now, will we need all these? Probably not. And uh, if we don't, then that's, that's good. Um, as long as we can see the pattern, sometimes you may need to list out maybe three or four times until you see the pattern. So here, cosine x. can be expanded and obviously this is where c is power 4. So the first term is power, is the square root of 2 over 2. And then this becomes minus the square root of 2 over 2 times x minus power 4. 
then it's just minus for that second derivative square root of 2 over 2 times x minus power 4 to the second over 2 factorial then we keep going plus the square root of 2 over 2 times x minus power 4 to the third this is divided by 3 factorial then for the fourth one plus the square root of 2 over 2 times x minus power 4 to the fourth power and this is all over 4 factorial so here c is centered at power 4 plus and so on the pattern here is interesting um, is because the signs instead of alternating they're alternating in pairs except for the first one right and so here this is two negatives two positives and then the fifth derivative and the sixth derivative will be both uh, negative my space has run out so, so we get the, the pattern so here I write cosine x is equal to the, the you can write this in two ways you could say that this is a summation plus another summation which personally I'm fine with that um, the, the author gives us a, a, a somewhat of a, um, a chronicle delta um, that is a factor in terms of getting plus or minus uh, terms and and he has this chronicle delta that gives gives us two pairs of, of, of negatives two pairs of positives and in sequential uh, uh, order and that's the factor the exponential factor of n times n plus 1 divided by 2 so I use that um, if you forget it's fine I, I forget that as well and so here this each one has the factor of the square root of 2 over 2 we put that out in the front this is the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity and and to confiscate for the um, this altern alternations and the signs the pairs of alternations we write negative 1 to the n times n plus 1 over 2 that's in that exponent and then here this is times x minus power over 4 here to the nth power and that's divided by n factorial now another way of writing that and I'm fine with with that I don't know if web assign would accept it like this but or you can write uh, the answer square root of 2 over 2 we have that times the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity and here this is negative 1 to the n times x minus power over 4 to the 2n divided by 2n factorial plus the square root of 2 over 2 times the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x minus power 4 to the 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 1 factorial. You take both of these guys together uh, for your answer that's
So I'm fine with that as the answer. Or you can write the answer like this. Okay, good. Now this guy we can borrow from something that we had done uh, already. Let's see if I can find it. We're looking for one over x uh, centered at one. I think I worked that one out. It's the same thing. One over x uh, centered at one. There it is. So the answer that we got was this guy right here. See if I can capture that and just throw it over there. Bingo. Okay. Oh, to the nth power. Make sure I have the nth power back there. Oh, I guess it just didn't didn't copy over. Hey, we got this guy back there as well. So we're fine him. The natural log of x centered at one, which you know those two guys go together. Do you recall? Do you recall how we got it? I can show you real quick. If if this is the case, the natural log of x is equal to the integral of one over x. Right? So that's like saying the integral of this summation. Here that gives us the natural log of x is the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity. Of negative 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1. Number 27, recall that e to the x has the power of series form. The summation is n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So e to the x squared over 2 is the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity. Wherever I have x, I'm going to write x squared over 2. So this is x squared over 2 to the nth power, and this is divided by n factorial. And we simplify that. So the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the 2n. 2 raised to the power n is x raised to the power 2 raised to the power n is x to the 2 times n. This is all over 2 to the nth. And then this is times the n factorial downstairs. Hey, we did this one as well. And it said McLaurin. This guy, let's see if we can go find that the natural log of 1 plus x, where c is equal to 0. I think I got that one. Let's see. If not, it's easy to build. That's the cool thing about it. That's it. f of x equals the natural log of x plus 1 centered at 0. We borrowed 
this function 1 over x plus 1 and we integrated that. So there it is there. Let's see if I can capture him as well. There you go. Then the last one, we know that um, uh, I think I'm going to use black. If you remember that sine x can be written as the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1. You remember the sign picks up the negative values, or the odd values, excuse me, the odd values. The cosine picked up the even values. So this is 2n plus 1 factorial. So if that be the case, then we replace the x with 3x. This is the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, here, this is 3x to the 2n plus 1, and that's all over the 2n plus 1 factorial. I think that'll do it. Thank you.